Hi everyone, Chaos Nova here, and this is another episode of Chaos Tutorials. So today we're going to go over an updated version of the Steam installation guide I made last year. Um, with the new updates to Kogus Crossover, there's a new and better way to install Steam in Kogus Crossover. Um, I wouldn't recommend necessarily installing it unless your version of Steam seems to be having issues, in which case you want to have a new Steam install for your update. Even then, it's the last resort. Um, sometimes you've got issues with games in Steam, you simply want to restart Steam. It often works. But you know, if you want it, if you're doing a new install, this is a better way to do it thanks to version 24 of Coders Crossover, or more specifically 24.0.5. And so you start by installing as a Windows 10 64 bit file, as you see here. And there's going to be some additional steps, and hopefully, we'll take a look and see how this all works out as we install Steam. So, first of all, your fonts say so yes to install those. It's going the installation. Now, the Steam installation is rather easy. The second part that comes after it gets a little bit more complicated and a little bit more long. So Steam setup. I'm not going to show the password input. You should be able to go to your email and use the uh, verification. So it's going to be a setup. There it goes. So Steam's being updated to the newest version. Um, eventually, there's going to be another version uh, when Steam requires at least Windows 11. But as now, it works well on Windows 10. Uh, quite a number of games work well with Steam, including uh, Maryland 3, and not just the Uprising expansion, which was originally the case for a while, um, where only the Uprising expansion works. Now you have both the base game Red Alert 3 and the Uprising. One of the things I do like is you can save data space to command a copy of games and other games by only installing the expansion for a game and not having to install the base game with that expansion. You can install the expansion and the base game separately in Steam, which saves a lot of storage space in the hard drive if you're concerned. Now, as we're going forward, Updating. So the next part we're going to do is how to install 64-bit dependencies into Steam. So with the newest update of 24.0.5, Coders has streamlined the process of doing the 64-bit dependencies, or you know them as .dll files or libraries. They're support files that help your applications run more efficiently in a 64-bit environment. DirectX, Direct3D direct music and so on. So we're going to go ahead and do 64 bit libraries. So here, as you're in, you click up and install Windows application on 64 and select the 64 bit dependencies. You will stream on the up and make sure you have all the necessary 64 bit apps libraries installed so that your 64 bit app, it's, it's necessary files for it to run. DirectX, as I said before, DirectDraw, Direct3D, Direct Music, all these necessary audio, audio graphics processing uh, files that it needs. So it starts off with .NET, and uh, as this goes on, just make sure it's say yes to just have all these options, installations that go on, they're all required. This or so on. Now, we're going to go in and take a slight detour with the Bethesda audio override for Steam. Um, this is important for various Bethesda games, including Doom games, Fallout games, Elder Scrolls games within Steam. So, just to let you know, 64 bit dependencies takes about 15 minutes if your computer is working well. But in the meantime, we're going to go, while we're waiting for this long download, we're not going to wait through it all the way. We're going to go and I'll show you the other process known as the Bethesda Audio Override for Steam, 
and then we can come back to the installation and the further steps therein. It's in much better audio without much error. So in the case of Steam games, it's a little different because you have to use the wine configuration process into the Steam bottle instead of into the game bottle like you do with the GOG or CD slash DVD installations for Bethesda games. So here I'm going to get started and we're going to take a look at how this works a little differently when you're using Steam. So without much further ado, we are going to get started in three, two, one, go. Okay, so here we are. This is a Steam bottle in Coders Crossover 24. And here are the override files that we're going to copy and paste. So we're going to copy and paste X3 Audio 1.6. Copy that down in the libraries of one configuration, the libraries tab. Then we're going to do X3 Audio 1.7. That one, copy and paste. Yeah. I need to take a look at my mouse because it's being a little skippy today. So 1.7, X Audio 2.6, add it. Using copy and paste so you get the text right on it. And X Audio 2.7. All right, come on, copy and paste here. Copy and paste. Come on, select it. I'm sorry about my mouse being in error, but you know, the copy and paste is a great way to make sure it copies and pastes. I will have the actual uh, text for you to copy and paste in the description of this video, which will be this one, and it will also later come into being both versions of the Bethesda Audio Override. So there it is, and now you should be able to get into Steam and play whatever your Bethesda game is. So, in the meantime, I am just going to be working on some more Bethesda games because they're one of the top scoring hits with my audience. You, my audience, demanded it. It's great. So coming up next after this one, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Doom 1 plus Doom 2, which is a special uh, remake, or rather remaster of Doom, where they combine Doom and Doom 2. And after that, we're going to be talking about the Prince of Persia trilogy. Both are great. I'm going to have a little bit of updating with the installation of Coders Crossover Steam. So we should have a nice time with those other apps as well. You can find out more on my blog over at uh, Radio Chaos blog. And I'll show you the link in the description. We are, here we are at the end of 15 minutes of installing 64-bit dependencies. Now this really streamlines the process of getting these various libraries that don't quite install correctly on their own into the Steam bottle. And after this, we have to work our game DXVK in. And that should be a breeze on its own. So we're going to go over and get DXVK installed. All right. So here we are at the end of installing the 64-bit dependencies. So as we finish this, we're going to go into installing DXVK, which is a great help to compatibility with um, Direct3D11 and DirectX11. And then we will proceed to boot up Steam. And that will be the end of this instructional video, as you now know how to get Steam installed in an updated manner. Uh, I just want to say thank you to Coders Crossover for getting these 64 bit dependencies down and working. So that we have a process much more streamlined to make sure you install these 
items for the 64-bit dependencies, otherwise it works quite well. So, as we go forward, we uh, go and install these final additional libraries. First, we go into all right. So here we are. We looked up DXVK 64-bit DLs only. So this is the basic files you need for DXVK. We're going to install these. Okay, this is going. It's going, and we have it going. So it's done. Now we need to get the other DXV cases. There's going to be upstream and built in. Those are the bits we have to install for DXVK. So we're going to move on to looking up DXVK, and we'll select up the built in and upstream for that. So DXVK, built in, install that. I can see files going. And that way, for a lot of these apps, you can use DXVK, activate it, and run it while you're running the application. So here we go. Now we're going to have to do the other DXVK on Tenya. So upstream, get that going. And it is going, which is great. Just great. Okay. And we're just taking a look at this, but this is just about it. Now you're ready to get Steam running. This is Visual C++, but uh, we're going to cancel that because we already have it. So here is the conclusion. Hi everyone, Kirsten over here, and this is the ending of the video presentation on Chaos Tutorials, and here's the deal. If you want to see more of my uh, tutorials on getting your old games to work on Mac and you want to see more tutorials on how to do various other tasks such as very cheap ways to make YouTube videos that still look decent and much much more um, feel free to subscribe and if you want to be among the first to get each video hit the notifications and please if you enjoy liking this your vote still counts, so please click the like with a big thumbs up. Alright, you have a wonderful day. And